Hello there, it's Mark here. Uh, yeah, so last time I did the Disney Tag video, I said that I was going to do a what's in my camera bag. Sort of special, as it were. Because quite a lot of people have asked while we've been doing the vlogs, uh, you know, what cameras do you use, um, what, what do you record on, what do you photograph on. Uh, so here we go. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start off with what I carry everything in. I actually carry everything in a rucksack, which is over there, so I'm not going to bring that over, but while we're in the parks, in my rucksack is this little Tamrack camera bag that I have, which is kind of like a weatherproof flat thing I can pop it on over my shoulder if I don't want to carry the rucksack around all day. Uh, it's really good though because you can stick all sorts of stuff in. So these are two of the things I always carry and it's a really good idea to have. One is a lens cloth because a lot of video tends to look very blurry and messy if you're not using lens cloths quite regularly so I'll just pop that on the dog. And the other one is a lens pen so it's kind of the same sort of thing but you can use that end to sort of clean your lens and that end to dust it. They're useful then, they're about five, ten pounds, something like that. The other thing is, and of course, very important when you're vlogging, lots of spare batteries. These are for my SLR, but I also have them for the GoPro and for our handheld, which I shall get onto in a minute. So that's the bag out of the way, anyway. First off, the GoPro. Uh, where have I put the GoPro? Here it is, the dog's lying on it. We have the GoPro Hero 3 White. It was about £150 when we bought it. It's now discontinued, but you can still pick them up quite cheaply online, I think. Uh, they generally come with sort of these sort of waterproof housing things. This is the skeleton back one, but you can you also get the one to sort of make it waterproof. The good fun, the point and shoot, so you know, really simple, straightforward to use. The settings are a little bit awkward if you're using them, but you can connect to them using your phone. <laughs> that was quite handy to reach there. But one thing I would say though, if you're going to use this as your main vlogging camera is try and get one of these little sort of skeleton hose and things it just sits around the outside so rather than using your your waterproof doodad you just have this guy sits around the outside main reason being your microphones are, are sort of more exposed the only slight drawback being and probably quite a big one in florida is uh, no weatherproofing when you've got it in this little skeleton sort of doodad uh, one thing as well i've just noticed is i've left all the cotter ports on this side uncovered which is probably another good idea uh, this this one came off eBay. I can't remember what the brand was, but it, sorry Amazon. Um, but it also came with a little lens cover, which is really useful because obviously without your waterproof hosing, your lens is exposed and you could damage your camera. So pop that little piece of glass on there. Doesn't seem to affect the picture quality in any way, shape, or form. So that's quite good. Uh, this handle I didn't actually use in Disney. Uh, I was they, they do say no selfie sticks, so this handle probably would be allowed because it's not extendable. Although if you're very sneaky and you fancy carrying like a, an extended paintbrush thing, you can pop it in the bottom there, but we're going to be doing that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we didn't use it. We just didn't want to have to sort of justify it every time we went in. So what we did use instead was, on the back here, is my bag clip, which sort of spins around. You can clip this onto your rucksack. You can pop it on your t-shirt. You could, if you were sneaky, probably pop it on something in the back, so off the top of the camera. There. But we never used it for that feature. Um, the other thing I used, and you probably saw if you watched all of our videos, was I had a wrist strap, so this just literally pops around your wrist like that. Now this is a new one I've just bought recently in the hope that this one will last longer than the last one. So be really careful because they sell them on Amazon and uh, eBay, there's one of them but you can't separate this part. So it sits on there and it's it, it, the idea being you can... I should have probably done this in advance. You can pop your Gro GoPro over put the GoPro again in to your wrist strap it's very tight I've never actually used this yet there you go bolt it into place again can't get the thing in there and then you can pop it on your wrist like so and you can twist it round and point it at you while you're on Congo River Rapids getting soaked or you can point it at other people while they're on Congo River Rapids getting soaked. Uh, the other one I've got, I had, this bit here that I just split off didn't split off and while we were queuing for the monorail to go and see Magic Kingdom the first time it literally just sheared in half. So what I actually carried and again I think the dogs decided to lie on it. Oh maybe not. But anyway what I actually had was a little sort of um, like a bungee cord type thing that fastens into your bolt and you can wrap it around your, around your wrist as well so basically if this does fail your camera drops off and you catch it oh there it is actually this little thing here literally just bolts on 
a lot of examples here. Bolts on here with the bolt, and this bit can be wrapped around your wrist. That's a really good thing to have because that would have had that this uh, wrist strap, the old one, broken while on a ride. This would have stopped the, the, the whole camera just falling off and disappearing forevermore. Uh, which you don't really want as well because if, if you lose your camera on the ride, then that's bad for you because you've lost your camera, but it's much worse for ride ops because then they're going to go and retrieve it at some point in the future. And if it falls somewhere that could cause damage, that yeah, that's a big no no for me. So I absolutely have to have a backup when I'm on a ride. So I'm not reliant on a bit of plastic. Now what else have we got? I did, I do have a little go, go pod sort of, sort of gorilla pod thing. Which, these are really quite cool because you can just fasten them to things and pop it onto trees and stuff like that. But if I'm honest, didn't use it all that much in Florida. Uh, one thing I have got, which was to replace the wrist strap when that broke, was I bought this thing here. I'm not going to show this as an example because it's a right pain in the bottom to set up. But it's basically like a, like a, it sits around your chest type thing and sits here, your chest mounted so you can film what's in front of you. The problem I have with this was, um, it's really well built, it's really good quality because it's the official GoPro one. So it was like $40 from Walmart, sorry for the clip. The problem with it being is, when you're on a ride it sort of sits about there. So if the guy, sorry, the guy in front of you is a bit taller than you, or for example, like it was mine train or something like that, the seats have that sort of back on them like that. You don't really film anything but the bar in front of you, so maybe not the most useful thing. I suppose if I do start cycling again, I could probably wear this while I'm cycling and get some really cool shots of me riding my bike down a hill and possibly falling off and into a tree. But other than that, it's um, it's kind of what it is. It's not too bad. One really useful thing, and I didn't think it would be useful, and I threw it in the last minute, and this is the replacement version of it, the old version down here, was these things. These are little range extender batteries, so you can plug your USB kit cards in, I don't have any spare handy at the minute, pop into there, into your phone, into your GoPro, whatever, and it'll charge up. That one was about £12 and does 5,200mAh, allegedly I would say it doesn't, though it probably does about a charge of a phone. It's about two and a half thousand milliamp hours. That one is my new one, and that does over ten thousand, and that's a proper branded one. So I'm hoping that that'll be much better quality than that one. Really useful to have, not massively expensive, and could probably save you if you do run out of batteries or you, you know, you forgot to charge them overnight, because you can actually just use this to power the camera. Uh, the one thing I haven't got handy is our actual recording camera, which is probably the most important thing. So one moment, and I'll grab that. Right, I'm back, and here we have it, my main vlogging camera, the camera we chose. We uh, we obviously had the choice of the Canon G7X and things like that, but we didn't know much about vlogging when we bought them, so we actually went primarily to buy a compact camera that we could use in the parks and sort of around about and have fun with, and we decided on the Panasonic Lumix TZ60, I nearly forgot the model then. This has actually been superseded now, so there's like a TZ70 and a TZ80, but that's actually really good, because if you do fancy doing some vlogging on one of these cameras, this was 325 quid when we bought it, you can pay it for 200 now. But yeah, it's really good. It's uh, 30 times zoom, super long, sort of daft bro over the top lens that you'll probably never need the full zoom for. Um, it's got stereo recording on the top. One thing we did notice, and I think this is probably just something that we struggled with, was on, I think, the third day we were recording an Epcot and the rain broke and a drop went donk and landed straight on one of the microphones. Now for the rest of the holiday for us we found that the sound was off on that microphone and I had to actually get it repaired. So the weatherproofing on this camera may not be great. Unfortunately I suppose every camera is like that though, you know, it's circumstance will be in that the range is dropped at the right spot. But yeah it'll do uh, 1080p and I think it goes up to sort of 50 frames or something like that. I just kind of put it on the standard setting which I generally for about 30 frames. Low light performance wasn't amazing, but for the money, it did the trick. Uh, I don't. It was no worse than the GoPro, for example, which was terrible in low light. Uh, but also as well, and the main reason why I picked it is, it makes a cracking, uh, what's the name, compact camera, so you can get all your shots on this as well. So there we go. Right, and the, the last thing I'll show you today is kind of a bit of a cheat here. Uh, this is Gemma's camera body and my camera lens, because I'm actually using my camera to record this. This is an EOS 450D, so this is a little bit of an older model now, and mine is a 600D, which is also pretty old. Um, to be honest, this time we probably won't be taking them, because they're quite heavy. 
I mean, this is great for zooms because it's quite a long zoom lens. But uh, yeah, they're quite heavy to carry around. I can video on them because I'm doing that now, well, I can on the 600. But it doesn't sort of track focus. So for vlogging purposes, to be honest, I wouldn't bother with it. It's it's more of a photography camera, which is uh, it was designed for, really, you know. Um, but yeah, really good quality photos, but a lot of weight to carry. And I'll just pop up there. And one thing that's just happened, and probably a good example is, I just run out of memory on the memory card that I'm using. So one thing you do need to carry quite a lot of if you're going to vlog is a lot of memory cards. And what I tend to do is I get around about 32 gigabytes, but I get a lot of them. There's a 16, there's an 8 because it's an old one. Uh, what I do find as well is for flexibility I tend to take the little micro SD ones and the little docks, and the dog's up, <laughs> the little docks for um, a normal camera because GoPro, bang it in the normal camera and you're laughing. And also as a final backup it's always handy to take your mobile phone because you can do 1080p video on that as well, or more if, if your camera allows it. So there we go, that's pretty much everything that I carry, I think the other thing, I mean I throw in like a waterproof poncho and whatever else, I'm trying to see if there's anything I've missed, but that's pretty much it. So I'll be using this mainly in the zoos as well, so if you see us like uh, on our zoo vi vlog videos we'll generally have these with us because we're always shooting animals with cameras, not guns. They don't like that apparently. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. So I hope that was useful and uh, sort of point you to sort of what a, like a typical person who's a bit of a geek carries with him to vlog a holiday. Uh, so yeah. Oh, the other lenses actually, that's just reminding me. The other two lenses we did take on holiday, we took out. This is a 70 to 300 mil lens, so you've got reasonably far away to very far away, uh, within reason, because you can get longer ones. Uh, we take an 18 to 55 lens, which is the standard lens you get with most SLRs, and that's great for portraits. And also, I. I think I popped it over there, but I also have a nifty 50mm 50, 50 lens, which is really good fun to play with, because it's it's got like a really shallow f depth of focus, as it were. I'm not sure if that's the terminology right, but basically you can get some really arty, kind of blurred out background shots with it, and it's good fun to play with. It, it, yeah, you've got to be quite creative with it as well, because it doesn't have any zooms. So, you, so if you want to zoom, you literally go, move close, I think. But there we go, that's all my kit. I didn't take a tripod, I didn't take... Um, any fancy microphone setups because I just didn't want extra things to carry and then this time I'm going to even try and cut it back even th further so it's like literally just the bare minimum I need to get by because bag checks were taking quite a while and I believe they've upped that again. So anyway there we go, hope that was useful for you and if it was give us a like, give us a subscribe or a subscribe like I always get these two wrong. Well, anyway, uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do next. Maybe we'll do a zoo vlog at some point before we go on holiday because we are getting down. How many days are we now, Jam? 55. 55 days to go until we're back in Florida in the sun, relaxing. And we're making custom mirrors as well, so hopefully we'll, um, we'll be wearing those on the holiday. I suppose we could vlog doing that, but it'll just be glue everywhere. It's all over this table now. Hello, I did want to add a little addendum to the end of the video because I forgot to do this. Uh, one of the other questions I see quite a lot, and we've had it a few times on our videos, is what editing software do you use? Well, this is my little Asus laptop, which is currently churning away through the video that I just recorded earlier. Um, I probably should stop it because I've got a bit of extra to add on now. Uh, I use uh, Sony Movie Studio Platinum 12, as you can probably see in the top left hand corner there. It's not the most recent software. It's pretty full featured though, it's basically a cut down version of Sony Vegas which is like borderline professional editing suite. Um, it, it does pretty much everything I need it to do and it was about 22 quid and it works perfectly on a, on a Windows PC. Uh, what I will say though is that uh, this laptop is like, I think it's a, an i5 dual core, it's it's not the slowest thing in the world but it, if you do have a sort of gaming PC handy or <laughs> something like that, yeah, because you just find one under the stairs, but uh, yeah, I have a, bit, a bigger PC upstairs, so what I generally do is edit on this, save it, take it upstairs, and then encode the thing on, on uh, my PC upstairs, which is much quicker. Not too bad for this sort of 12 minute long video, but if you're doing 40 minutes of a, a full day at Disney, then you're probably going to want a bit more grunt behind the PC if you want to get encoded anytime soon. This would do it, it'd just take a lot longer to do it. So there we go. Hope that was useful. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.